I'm gonna do. I'll do. Uh, <laughs> all right, man. I'm gonna do the intro on another time. So we're just gonna jump into it. So uh, go no, ahead. We can and, do an intro now. Oh, yeah, you wanna do an intro? Go ahead. Yeah. And, uh, who are you, and uh, what do you do? So my name is Ryan Strauss. I'm a Bitcoin evangelist. <laughs> I First like found out about Bitcoin in 2012, and pretty much becomes your entire life once you really. Uh, Get into it there. I know, it sucks. <laughs> it's like a gravity in a rabbit hole, which just sucks you in. It really does, man. Uh, you first have that aha moment. You know, I think I'm seeing that a lot right now in particular, right? Like, look at the price for jumping up towards a thousand, right? And oh, yeah. I think, by the way, it's going to happen tonight. Uh, That's what I was thinking, man. I was like, yo, at this rate, I didn't want to jinx it or nothing, but yeah, I'm with you. I, if I had to bet on it, I'm with you. Well, particularly because a lot of the trading goes on overseas, right? Yeah. So there's like over 90% of Bitcoin trading has been in Yuan in 2016. So think about that. So same with India. You're seeing a lot of growth, you know, all throughout Korea's mm -hmm. a lot of growth. and Venezuela, they're getting into it. Right. I keep seeing their name brought up a lot. Me too. I think uh, actually Google something about Google's searches is up 415% on uh, Venezuela, uh, the term Bitcoin. Sure. They're searching Google 415% more now. Right. So I like to think about um, is the local Bitcoin's volume. So that's an interesting indicator as to how many people are adopting it and looking towards Bitcoin because not everywhere has a service as established as Coinbase, you know, where they have like the regulatory yeah um approval essentially and support yeah i haven't gotten into uh local bitcoins i really need to start looking at them i just started looking at liberty x which seems to be exactly what local bitcoin sounds like sure but i definitely want to check them out it looks like we're gonna at my work be selling bitcoin via uh liberty x okay so when you walk in you hand us cash we give you bitcoin is that the same as like local bitcoins it's similar but local bitcoins has a lot of online involvement in there oh so it isn't like i show up and get bitcoin like that it depends on the specifics of the arrangement oh okay cool yeah. yeah i gotta look into that there's a lot of different options to acquire bitcoin but what i'm really excited about right now is the general increased understanding around bitcoin right so yeah. like, there have been two times recently where someone just brought up bitcoin in conversation without me even mentioning it to them yeah. That wasn't really happening last year or, you know, in previous years. I, I wear the uh, pin that says, ask me about Bitcoin. So mm -hmm. people tend to ask me about it a lot. And uh, quite a few know already. And it's weird because, like, when I first got into it, I would ask people, like, yeah, do you know what the hell Bitcoin is? Because I've been Googling it. And I was like, what? And now all of a sudden people are like, already, yeah, I heard about it on the, the news or something. So it's, it's getting mainstream media's attention right now. Absolutely. And it's definitely showing in, in the streets. Absolutely, and particularly here in America, like a lot of people have heard the word blockchain and... Well, what got you into Bitcoin? No, that's an interesting question. So back in 2012, I was thinking a lot that's about early. money. <laughs> yeah. Wow. But there's, there's a lot that went on Bitcoin before then. That's true, yeah. So I found if you ask why and about the world enough times, you always get back to money. And if you can find a way to improve the money system, like maybe that can actually lead to a better life for everyone, less environmental destruction, less consumption, and not have like a debt-based money system, which encourages growth and overconsumption and overproduction. Yeah, that'd be nice. <laughs> right, when, so when I think about Bitcoin, I'm not just thinking about economics or making money or pumping up the price. I'm thinking about how do we create a better money form of money that creates a better world for everyone that's interesting i like thinking of the uh, bitcoin personally besides like besides the money point as a technology perspective sure like that is where i'm intrigued like all the things that blockchain's capable of absolutely and it's so much i mean the the blockchain technology is and then the fact that the byproduct is currency is like genius well here's the thing do you think a blockchain is truly a blockchain if there's no underlying cryptocurrency? True. I mean, there's. I've been seeing more and more things. I haven't really read enough of them about the point of a centralized and a decentralized blockchain and why there's a purpose for one and the other. And I want to get 
I want to know more about that. So if you do know anything about that, lay it on me. Absolutely. So people have heard about a decentralized proof of work blockchain, which is what Bitcoin is. Right. And Bitcoin functions by encouraging anyone to donate their computer to the network. And in return for doing that, you get the cryptographic token that runs the network. Yeah, that's the reward. That's why we let our electricity run the computers. Absolutely. However, so a lot of people have heard about blockchain and they want to get involved. They want to experiment with the technology or see like, how it benefit their business. And for some people, a proof of work decentralized blockchain like Bitcoin is what they need. However, other people want to use the technology for a different purpose and are creating their own versions of blockchain technology that still give them a centralized um, final control in accessing the data and changing the data within that database. You're talking basically like an altcoin. Well, it's not exactly an altcoin. It's more of an in-house database solution. Oh, so there's no token reward. It's just the blockchain technology without the rewards. Well, maybe there is a token reward. A lot of the projects aren't being very transparent about that. I don't blame them. <laughs> but you have All these patents are popping up right now. Have you um, looked into anything in particular around that? Uh, I definitely tried. I spent a couple hundred dollars talking to a patent attorney about yeah. a Bitcoin idea and it was basically not a physical patent I couldn't get, but I could have got a uh, a design patent. And then the way he explained design patents was like a whole new like pyramid scheme, basically. He was like, okay. look, dude, you can patent it with this design, but that doesn't stop some other company with a bunch of money from changing the design two inches and getting away with it. Right. So I was like, all right, not worth my, my money. And he was like, no, not worth your money. So I, I paid him some money to find out that, you know, some ideas aren't that easy to get going. No got to have money to make money that's for sure well that's helps yeah but i definitely had a bitcoin related idea and it was uh it was doable just not financially feasible right so maybe with this price increase i can afford one day to go about it absolutely um you know it's interesting right because you can look at the blockchain as a solution for like your patent that you're talking about true and if you that completely changes the way that you when you start a company you have autonomy over securing it for yourself more quickly and so some people they've come in big companies with resources are creating blockchain that allows for someone like you to take your video and monetize it on a blockchain which is what steam it is doing yeah yeah steam it and uh, yours to be coming soon so steam it's a social network where you can post blog posts on the blockchain and they have their local token that is rewarded to both the those who are involved in the network that like posts and people that are putting up content. They're getting rewarded. I put up a couple posts, maybe like two or three. Did just you make this, anything? Uh, my Steam it wallet. Not I, I don't know how what's going on, but like the individual posts are getting like likes or whatever it is, but they're not the the value of it is still zero dollars looking. Sure. But then I go to my wallet and it went from like a five dollar wallet to like a seven dollar wallet. Sure. So I got seven dollars in my wallet, but I don't know. So I still have to. The, the that's where I think Steam is going to have a hard time is that mm -hmm. learning curve from something so easy as you know, say Medium, and yeah. then Steam it. Right. That's night and day for for you know ease of use, man. You got to be pretty tech savvy. I I tried making a a text post, just wanted to write something and make it look nice, and it was basically going back to HTML and stuff. Right. I was just like, uh, I I don't have time for that. Well, they're still in beta. I'm ho hopeful for their project. and Oh, so am I. I'm actually uh, holding a lot of Steam It just oh, for yeah? the long-term hold. You trade? No, I don't trade. Well, okay. I was playing around with stuff. And if Steam It was on Jax, I would trade. Because I, I like right. to use Jax Wallet to trade. Okay. I'm such a nerd when it comes to stuff like that. I've learned to use the Jax Wallet to use Shapeshift and just transfer tokens around every once in a while yeah i mean you're not the only one yeah so like i feel like if they added steam it i would but right now i'm just holding i got like a hundred right now i want to try to get a couple more hundred steam it's especially because sure. they're low right now okay and then even if it went to half of what it used to be at its all-time high it'd be like two bucks that'd be awesome right well there's a lot of these coins right now that are being created and they're 
sometimes they're open projects like Bitcoin with an actual blockchain, but sometimes they're created more questionably. Like you could argue that they're Ponzi schemes. Right. I know. I've seen. That's what my first idea of Steam it was. I was talking to uh, the Bitcoin podcast crew, and uh, I was talking to Corey. And I was like, dude, uh, Steam, it looks like it's a, po- a Ponzi scheme. Like, oh, yeah, like my shit. And if someone likes it behind you, you get a kickback and I get a kickback. And right. then that pattern occurred. And I'm like, man, that sounds a little bit like a Herbalife or something. Like, Yeah, you always have to be on the lookout. And so you have, like, different companies are creating technology. Sometimes it's open and, like, anyone can benefit from the network right but sometimes it's such that they have the final control and it's really no different than the old system if right it's a centralized right. party that's controlling the network then that's not really an open proof-of-work blockchain with a token that's just a blockchain that its name was usurped and they created a technology that is a database technology that could be useful for them a private blockchain can still be incredibly useful for a bank but the remediation and the remediation costs will be lower for okay. the databases. However, it's not a truly open blockchain. And a lot of these altcoins that are being created aren't, they're not the qualities that we see in Bitcoin. Bitcoin is what matters. Yeah, that's what's exciting. And that's why it's growing because it has incredibly secure network, exponential growth in computational power in 2016. Triple transaction use in the last two years. The adoption rate is ridiculous right now. Right? And you have this open network that is demonstrating the importance of keeping networks open right. and not use, not creating a closed network that embraces traditional qualities, embracing the new qualities of the new internet that builds in decentralized monetization. So, so what do you think the future of Bitcoin is? very interesting it's hard question right like yeah but i mean if you had to like if you if not if you had to like bet on but if you had to speculate on which direction where do you see it do you see it going still as a as a money or do you see it just you know sticking around as a storage of value and it doesn't really get used as a currency or do you just see it being like a background technology right it's definitely not gonna be a background technology (laughs) you think it's gonna be like people know this is being used I believe so. It's a technology that will be used to transfer cash online internationally, or at least a digital representation of cash. But CirclePay just put Bitcoin in the background, and now people who use it will never, like, say if they're new to CirclePay, sure. they'll never know that Bitcoin's really helping that money move. However, so, like, if people go ahead and make a bank account and Wells Fargo just starts using blockchain to shift cash around, people may not know the term blockchain, you know? They may not know the term Bitcoin, because it could it could go that way. Yeah, but now those people know what Bitcoin is, right? Like they right. didn't even know before. And you're now, right. Like, they'll see the shirt, right? Like you're walking down the street, ask me about Bitcoin. And like, here's a Bitcoin. Yo, when I code. tell people about like, that, it blows their mind. They're like, it? wait, how fast does money move? <laughs> I'm just like, look, if you take a picture with me right now and somebody in China says that's an awesome picture, 10 years from now, they send that t-shirt money. The moment they send it money, I get it on my debit card. That's oh yeah, that's right. I can use Bitcoin as a debit card. Wow. Yeah, that's like that conversation too. It's like somebody's like, oh yeah, how do you even spend or use Bitcoin? I'm like, well, dude, if your boss handed you cash, how would you pay your bills? There's some hoops you got to jump through. You got to go get a money order at the very least, a bank account in some cases, and then you got to get a debit card to access the money you just gave the bank. Well, essentially, that's what my debit card is. I gave some place some Bitcoin to hold on to. I linked the card to it, and now that's how I pay for my, my rent. Right. And so... In the future, we're not going to have to jump through these bridges between the traditional system and the new system. Yeah, I hope so. We're going to have... How far do you think that future is, though? Sooner than most... 2020 or earlier? As early as we make it. That's true. People that talk about it and use it is supporting the concept of this technology, of Bitcoin. And it's not something to be afraid of. It's something to be aware of. Because it's not something that's going away. So Bitcoin, a lot of people have heard about it, you know, through Silk Road or I know that's, else. yeah, Silk but, Road's really popular. Well, it's, the Bitcoin network is so much more than that. Oh, yeah. So you have 
so much more use for that's remittances. Like, yeah, that's like bringing up, uh, hey, have you heard about the internet? And they're like, yeah, isn't that for porn? <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, well, but no. Well, porn helped further the yeah. adoption and also the technology behind it. That, I, not to get off topic, but it, it uh, forced the adoption of uh, camera technology. Mm-hmm. Like, that's why camera qualities are like 4K and 3D, VR, all that shit. Wow. I'm pretty sure porn industry pretty much financed all that. Didn't know. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty. I'm. I bet on. I'm pretty sure that's why we have like all these crazy. Because that technology, there, the industry just funnels money into that stuff. Well, I think in 2017, you're definitely gonna see more use of Bitcoin in adult entertainment. In um, yeah, the adult industry in general, for sure. Right, but like other forms of alternative. Dude, did you uh, not to cut you off, man? Oh, fucking uh, Airbnb. That's right. What? I know. Yo, well, I saw that, and it was did. like, wait a minute. <laughs> So, and, and like, that was just got done doing a video the other day on how Starbucks is accepting Bitcoin through their app, so you can just get coffee, like, that way through uh, I pay you. Sure. And then and the next day, I see that uh, Airbnb wants, you know, everybody on there wants to be able to use Bitcoin. Well, Brian Chesky just put it on Twitter, like, you know, what should we do next year? And, like, a huge response from the Bitcoin community, and I think that's a great oh, that would uh, be potential, you know, part. I mean, partnership. Bitcoin's not a company, right? Like, they should implement Bitcoin. Yeah, but it would be hugely in alignment with their vision and connecting the world and, like, give people in the developing world opportunity to use Bitcoin to help host people. Yeah, that's and true. And make money from their own. I mean, homes. things like Airbnb and Uber are just proof that the internet is physically changing our lives. Like, and people don't think of it that way. They don't feel physically altered. I'm like, but. That, that's, you know how the airplane was invented and now you can go fly to Europe? That physically changed the world for you. And that's what Bitcoin's doing. Now you can just, I need a stranger's going to come pick you up. Somebody go get the ride. There you go. Everyone works out that way. Hey, I need a place to crash because I got to that place I needed to go. You now you can just get on there. Here, here's some money. Let me say Get on your way. Right. Well, you've seen like in Austin, they outlawed. Uber and Lyft. Yeah, I know. Right? They're gonna, so yeah, but they outlawed, you know, torrents, and we saw how that worked out, you know? But you have Bitcoin and, like, Arcade City, you know, these concepts of proof of concept with communities using blockchain technology for, like, actual things. But don't right? you think like, that like, helps people associate Bitcoin tasks. with illegalness because you were just told, hey, you can't do Uber, and then someone's like, yes, I can if I use Bitcoin. You know what I mean? It kind of gives it that... that fringe look mm-hmm. like oh man only only people who want to break the law use bitcoin because it's a workaround for the law like no but the law sucks the law is stopping people from doing a job and paying their rent they were just doing a job and the law took them out of a job so well, like i think sometimes it bitcoin can hurt itself because of how much help it actually gives sure well bitcoin Bec- Bitcoin's a really complex thing, right? Yeah, dude, it's insane. It's a technology. It's a currency. It's, it's oh, and and nobody even knows how money works. So forget trying to explain Bitcoin. Well, it's not often that when you're young that you're even like you're not taught to like ask like what is the U.S. dollar like no, how yeah. how does money work, and like maybe like in school or something with you're playing Monopoly, your th- money you accept it for what it is as you grow older and there's an institutionalized system that's most people aren't questioning how to find something better bitcoin's the first thing that could have replicated a digital token that you can secure with a private key on a distributed network it's never happened before i know that you can't double spend yeah that's that's the big Mm -hmm. one right there you can't double spend it and I heard uh, somebody argue, or uh, yeah, it was in one of the Dash videos, like, you can double spend Bitcoin in a real life scenario. So, like, I guess because of the, the time it would take to prove the transaction could go be up to 10 minutes or something. So, like, if I physically sent you Bitcoin, then I physically sent somebody else it. But I feel like there's a lot of work involved for that that would be very, you know, it, it wouldn't be worth it. And then it would eventually show up in the block. It would be proven not to go to both people. Only whoever got the transaction first would get the Bitcoin. Well, it's worth being aware that like people are gonna try and do that sort yeah. of stuff with Bitcoin and other current. All oh, everything, funds. yeah. Right. But people do that with debit cards now, and people aren't like, "Oh, the U.S. dollar is broken." Somebody used a Visa and, and spent money that wasn't theirs in two locations. Like, I love when people go, "Wasn't Bitcoin hacked?" I'm like, "Wasn't Target hacked?" Like, if you ever spent money at v- at Target with your Visa, you should feel really insecure about your money right now, right? And then people are like, <laughs> "Yeah, I guess," and I'm like, "Well." 
why do you think Bitcoin was hacked, but you don't think the U.S. dollar was hacked? Like, where's the logic? <laughs> well, you know, that's showing more and more awareness mm -hmm. of, like, you know, losing your information. Everyone's had their credit card, um, like, stolen at some point. And you gotta, there's a lot of personal responsibility we need to start taking for ourselves. <clears throat> and we can't just keep, you know, giving it away to the banks and Visa and other companies that, and expect them to just take care of us. So what do you think Bitcoin holds for 2017? 2017? Yeah. Definitely over a thousand the whole year. That's whole year. Whole year, without a doubt. Yeah, without a doubt. It's a solid that's number because that's the last peak, the uh, the literal unknown, and all the people that felt like they were wronged. That was that was all corrected with with understanding of what Bitcoin is now. That was so early. That was FOMO. That was, it was. I I don't think you can really relate anything to that whole crash scenario. But the, the fact that it went up that fast then and people didn't know what the hell was happening and they know what it is now. They know how it can be used now and they do see it going up. I I only see up. Like, that's just, I mean, that's just my opinion. Like, if, if I, I mean, if the, the, the adoption rate is 300,000 new wallets a month so far. Bitcoin searches in Venezuela is up 415%. Like, shit like that gets me hype. Like, I get right. excited. Like, my heart starts racing because I'm like... It's not just like, I feel like I'm reaping the benefits of something that helps the unfortunate. Because like where India, China, Venezuela, all these places that people are being forced into using Bitcoin as everyday transactional currency. And I'm investing on that. I'm betting on it. I'm profiting from like that makes me feel but i know that it's doing a good job right that's like betting on a surgeon you know what i mean like and feeling bad that you invested in his college money because you know he's saving lives but people have to need surgery for him to get money you know what i mean so like i feel like i'm invested in something that's doing good but it makes me feel a little dirty at the same time because something bad has to happen because like that's and i see like what's happening in china and what's happening in india where they're terminating these physical paper dollars and I'm pretty sure it was India, I read, that they already have that biometric money system where, like, people are paying with their fingerprints. Sure. Uh, not with debit cards or paper money or anything because all that shit can be fake. They're done. Like, they got screwed. So I think that they're working on that in India. And then you got Venezuela who just had the same incident in India happen where they just terminated their physical $100 notes or our version, like, their highest notes. But, like, Bitcoin's going to come in there and just take over. Like, that's going to be their everyday currency. The same way Apple Pay and Android Pay tried, but their transaction fee was like 5 to 7% or something. Right. Well, like that was their convenience fee. Oh, your customers can just tap their iPhone. You want five cents on the dollar for that? See, they're still partnering with the credit card companies, right? Yeah, that's a problem, man. That's a problem. And I, yeah, I'm with you. Yeah, go ahead. Well, that's why you're supporting Bitcoin, right? If right, cool, exactly. You're supporting something that works. <laughs> you can say whatever you want about Bitcoin. Like, yeah, it can be used for certain things if used in a secure way but that doesn't you're supporting something that works and is providing a service to people in the developing world who are unbanked and underbanked that don't have access to businesses like amazon and netflix and other services that we would expect mm -hmm. today and all over the world in you know from the furthest corners of the world like people are gaining access through this technology, oh yeah, look at VPNs online, find employment opportunity online, receive their payment in a more reliable way. So I'm a huge fan of freelance and like tasks. Just yeah, people want like, internet freedom, man. Through the money Bitcoin, freedom and through the blockchain, and on top of that, just like an accounting unit and storing your money. I really think that just simple that use case, like we were talking about, someone in India now just has the opportunity to like securely store their money just like mm -hmm. any of us would with bitcoin yeah that's huge yeah. and you're supporting that and like you're spreading that it's like you're spreading a gospel of bitcoin sometimes i feel world. like i'm preachy <laughs> <laughs> i get preachy on people but um i don't know it, it just bitcoin speaks to me as a technology and the fact that i can make money using it as a store to value over the bank system i mean the most I get is like 0.5% at the most from a bank. I mean, what? Why? And then I right. lose purchasing power over time anyway. So if I put 20 grand in the bank and waited a couple of years and took it, I wouldn't have as much purchasing power. I just mm -hmm. have the same amount of money. So who do you most want to see accept Bitcoin? Which business? A Wawa or Walmart? 
Wawa. I don't want to see Walmart Whoa. get in it. I don't want to see Walmart get in it too fast because they're too big. Okay. And I feel like that would slow down transaction. I don't know how blockchain technology works so like deeply. I'm still right. very new to Bitcoin, but okay. I know that if a shit ton of people started using it, it would suck for the network speed. Right. So I don't know if I want them necessarily to get into it too quick. And even if they did, it would the adoption rate would match the the blockchain rate anyway. I don't think everyone would just start using Bitcoin because Walmart said, "Hey, we accept Bitcoin." Mm. But I feel like if Wawa did. The people that, the, the amount of people that Wawa have in and out, how fast they want everything to be, I just want to walk into Wawa, walk out of Wawa, walk into Wawa, walk out of Wawa. That is going to be where you see Bitcoin, I think. Oh, yeah. I think they're going to be like, all right, and because Visa's been screwing us for the past forever and they wanted like 3% transaction fee and Bitcoin's like none, you know, we're going to lower our price if you, you know, give you a discount if you pay with Bitcoin. Mm-hmm. And then you'll see people like, all right, all right, we'll get into Bitcoin. And right. that's the thing, though, like, um, <clears throat> you were talking about, like, people having private blockchains and stuff like that. And that's, um, th- correct me if I'm wrong or whatever, but this is, like, my vision of it. Uh, you know how Wawa has their app? Do you, yep. do you have their app? They were I giving know. away free stuff all month. That's it was, cool. It was awesome. But yeah. they have an app. And if you add money to your, like, gift card, it's on the app. You can, you know, they'll just scan the QR code. But I figure that's sort of like an in-house blockchain almost. Like they have your money already in-house in like Wawa credit. And then you just mm-hmm. take that when you scan it at the register, it transfers it from the large, vet, you know, holding of Wawa credit to that business of Wawa. You know, they get the value. Right. So isn't that sort of in-house blockchain-y, like a, a gift card? Mm-hmm. I was starting to see stuff like after I got into Bitcoin and like blockchains and altcoins, I started seeing like, well, I was like, if I give Walmart all my money, and I have a Walmart gift card. That's basically like having a Walmart coin. You know what right. I mean? It's their money at that point, and I can mm-hmm. use it in their blockchain in their house. So I was like, well, wait, why the hell don't they just make their own altcoin and base it off the value of a Bitcoin at, at that given time? And I was like, yeah, how cool would it be if Wawa had an altcoin and I had like this much altcoin and it was worth X because Bitcoin's worth this at this time. So when I use their in-house blockchain coin, I get my, like, I was like, wow, like money transactions and stuff just started going off in my head when I learned right. about Bitcoin and blockchain. Oh, and yeah. I was like, yo, like I might not understand this stuff, but I can see like the potential of it. Like right. not knowing how exactly how the, how the internet works, but seeing something like Netflix, you know, before it was there. Right. Like, you don't have to know exactly how something works to precisely to see that it's capable of. Right. And I feel like that's Bitcoin. Like, that's how people are seeing it. Absolutely. And I like to think about the parallels between, like, the emergence of the Internet and what's happening now with Bitcoin. So it's it's a slow progression, right? Bitcoin's mm-hmm. been on around eight years. And, like, there were people that were that's online real slow. in the like, <laughs> 80s. So if people really started using like early versions of like something similar to what was known as eventually the web, which was different, but yeah, it wasn't AOL, like a private web thingy. Everyone was on for a while. And it was like, yeah, we're on the internet. I was like, you're on AOL. Like that's a different. Well, there were still like people like talking to each other through their, just through servers, even like, in the eighties and seventies. Right? right. No, but I meant like, that was like how the, the majority of people got into the internet was like this one version of it, but it wasn't quite it. It was just, you know, so I think that's maybe what Bitcoin might need is like that one thing everyone kind of uses. It may not be like the best ver like that's why I feel like uh, the debit cards. Like I've been seeing a lot of mm-hmm. videos saying don't use Bitcoin debit cards and stuff like that. I'm like, no, use them. Just use them responsibly. Sure. You know, that's yeah, like that's like saying don't use a you know a, a checking account. Like yeah, be an adult, dude. Just take responsibility. If you use right. a Bitcoin debit card, use the app set a limit on it so if you lost it there's only a certain amount you're at loss and it's usually insurable at the amount not the quantity of bitcoin but the amount of money would usually you know so right. you're still using a visa you, you're being protected so when people are like don't use bitcoin debit i feel like that's that's use a bitcoin debit card just be an adult be responsible right. and i think that's where we need to start trying to get people to see like you can buy bitcoin you can invest into it mm-hmm. when it goes up you can spend it at the store Absolutely. And, and if it decided to take a dip or something for that day, you can still use your other debit card from your bank account and just use cash. Right. So it's like, I feel it's like that might, yeah, I feel like right. that might be a good way to like go about it though, is starting to show people that route. Like you can spend Bitcoin anywhere the same way you can spend money anywhere with Visa. Well, you can't quite spend Bitcoin anywhere yet. And like, anywhere Visa is accepted. How? Because of the debit cards. Anywhere Visa is accepted, Bitcoin's really? accepted. Yeah. I need to travel. 
Huh? Have you tried one? Bitcoin debit card? Yeah, I have one. I have uh, Shift Payments. That's right. Yeah, and it works it. pretty much everywhere. Yeah. Cool. I Whenever Bitcoin goes up, like uh, over a certain percent after I bought in, I'll like treat myself. I'll spend that because my money got me farther. It's stronger money. So I'm going to spend my stronger money. So where are like physical locations, like restaurants, like where have you spent? Bitcoin? Wawa, Walmart. Um, you spend Bitcoin through Wawa already? Yeah, with, with my debit card. Yeah, nice. all the time. What else? Uh, Walmart. I usually just like around here. Yeah, yeah, just have around you ever the neighborhood. Gone to like a place that just like accepts Bitcoin, like in another city, like randomly. Um, well, only place in, around here that accepts Bitcoin as Bitcoin is um, Chew and Brew, the coffee house on Five Sixty One. Really? So yeah, if you cool. go in there, like you can just be like, yeah, I want a coffee, and be like, all right, how do you want to pay? And like Bitcoin, they're like, nice. all right, sweet. So you can get straight Bitcoin. You don't need the debit card or anything. They mm-hmm. just have a you know with BitPay. Right. So they just accept Bitcoin. Yeah, like there's a place in Chicago, um, right near Wrigley Field, and they said uh, their sales were, you know, upwards of like three or three to five percent in Bitcoin like, per month. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Well, Bitcoin's going up, so people that have it may just be spending right. it more often. That doesn't necessarily mean more people are spending it. So that may be the same people spending it more frequently. That's true. Because it would be me. If Bitcoin keeps going up, I'm going to keep spending my Bitcoin more than I'm going to spend my cash. Right. So that may be the case too. But I love seeing the adoption rate growing. And everyone's... I like how people are open about it too. Like, um... It was. It was ShiftPay. ShiftPay's uh, announced their adoption rate. Like, they were like, hey, this is how many people got one of our Bitcoin debit cards. There's a lot of people buying them. You know, the adoption rate's pretty decent. And uh, BitPay said the same thing. They're like, yeah, our debit cards are getting picked up. And right. they're only 10 bucks, and it gives you access to your Bitcoin to cash. Like, what? Well, all those people that heard about That's Bitcoin so convenient. Like, a few years ago, like now they hear about it again, they see the price is going to hit 1000 The first it question they're going to ask, though, is how do I spend it? still here, though. Yeah, it's true. Because like, what kept you into Bitcoin? Because it's, you said 2012, right? Yeah. Dude, that was a nightmare. So what kept you into Bitcoin? I was always really interested in it. Like, I recognized the potential. I recognized Right, so that. the price didn't matter. It was what yeah. it was capable of. Exactly. That's how I feel right now. Plus, I got that hype of where it's going price wise, and I know the floor is like at least a thousand. It's I, I really believe like that's the floor. We're not gonna go beneath a thousand if it goes past. Right. And uh, just like that, on top of like you said, the price don't matter. Like what it's capable of, what you see it doing other places. Well, it's thinking about how are those trends going to continue in the next year and the next two years and the next five years Dude, every month We've seen with bitcoin 20... every month is a year it's like dog years. oh my god it's insane Think you about... know how hard it is to keep up with bitcoin mm-hmm. it's a freaking insane nightmare man i'm like in the morning before my videos for the youtube i'm like sitting there trying to read on coin telegraph and stuff i'm like watching a video in the shower just like trying to catch up on some news so i can yeah, be like it's hard like how can i mediate some of this for people that think i'm entertaining enough to listen to Cause like that's why I do this. I'm like some people like I, there's some people I follow like Trevon. I'm like yo, he's entertaining as shit. I can exactly. follow his videos. He he relays his perspective on it. He doesn't try to oversell anything. He's like yo, this is what it is. And I I can dig that. And I watched it and I learned some right. shit. And I'm I'm like all right, this is entertaining. So I'm like, so let me see if some people just maybe I'm their the tone that they want to listen to. And right. if I am, I am. If I'm not, turn the channel, listen to someone else. So not everyone wants to, you know, read the entire Bitcoin white paper, right? Like people, I just can't make wanna... it through the first three, two pages. It was boring to be honest. It was like French. I didn't really understand what I was reading. So I was like, ah, I got it. I mean, did you do, you, can you explain it? Like in layman, I know we well, don't have like, much more technology. time left. Like how it actually works. Like, yeah, the, like if, I were like I didn't haven't read the whole white paper, so explain Bitcoin as the white paper would. So the main premise in the white paper is that you're eliminating the need for trust in a third party to oversee transactions on a database. So if you can eliminate that in terms of the function of money, you're putting forth this computational innovation that is the it's the result of forty years of research in it says that in the white paper cryptography okay all these things combined to produce a digital token that you can secure with private key you're applying public private key cryptography to a distributed computer network 
that solved a computational problem that hadn't been ever solved. Ever. Here's here's my question way. to this though, and, and some people once maybe once they get more into Bitcoin, not maybe not their first couple months, but like I found myself asking this after a while, like if the white paper was so great and everyone was like, "Yo, this is the Bible, bro. We need to do this white paper thing for Bitcoin." I was like, well, but why are people tweaking it so often? Why is it always, you know, why is it open source and everyone can edit it and make the block, right. make it better, quote unquote better. Right. And I'm like, wait, if it was so great, why are people fucking with it? Like, why is it being tweaked if it was so great then? Like, what makes it, what, what could make it better? So like, you know what yeah, I mean? Here's the thing. It's you, what you said before about like this Wawa coin what you're saying now, it's you always have to be careful. You have to be careful about their what they're saying with their altcoin, how it's created, what the incentives are around it, how the miners are set up, if there's an incentive token. Yeah, because they don't want anybody to take source, their stuff. Who's managing the code, who's changing the rules over time, who's over, like... Yeah, because somebody will take a patent on that tomorrow if they found out. This all changes per each altcoin. Bitcoin was the first one of these. It's the only one that's been proof of work the entire time. That hasn't had any pre-mined coins going to, like, people that are benefiting from it. Oh, okay. It's been fully secure. Yeah, when you 14, hacks, over 14, over 14 billion now. dollar market cap, man. Yeah, they it surpassed, surpassed sil- silver. Yeah, I was just going to say that. Uh, Jinx. They surpassed <laughs> Twitter, too. Twitter? Mm-hmm. Oh, shit. Yeah. I like saying silver, though. Like, I said that to somebody mm-hmm. earlier today, and he kind of pointed this out to me. I was like, yeah, we were talking about Bitcoin, and he knew about Bitcoin already. His friend's a miner. And uh, he was talking to me about, like, he gave me a pretty decent tip. So I'm pretty sure he has, he, he was into Bitcoin early. And um, <laughs> it was, uh, we were talking about, I'm sorry, where was I headed with that crap? Where was I headed with that? You were talking to your friend, he was a miner. But right before that. Ah, but we were talking about um, how he got into it, though, and, like, where it's headed and where he sees it going. And it was just mind-blowing that he saw it, like, way back then like you did in 2012 he did this craziness in 2013 he still went with it Mm -hmm. and he's still like with me preaching the gospel and stuff so bitcoin has shown a lot of pattern um throughout its history of typical and exponential price growth followed by like a bubble burst yeah and then i'm kind of waiting for that personally (laughs) and then it's been doing this multiple times but it's shown resilience if you look at bitcoin on logarithmic return scale it's been resilient and returning. Like now we're at almost the all-time high again, right? Yeah, yeah. So once almost. we break through that and those coins that were been locked up by the wow. people that bought at the recent max are then traded, it's gonna open up the market to these new entrants. And you have yeah, but you have that plus. There's only so many Bitcoin. Right, and we just had a halving in 2016. I know it's and That's people huge. people just getting into Bitcoin right now. I promise you aren't looking at that so they have almost no clue what's coming in the next couple of years well the mining is really what's at play so the mining has been getting so much more difficult i strong. haven't been following that i heard that they're looking at a whole new way of going about it or something like they're about to do a uh a bitcoin hard forks in the talk people have discussed it i mean the box size debate is a really like contentious issue i know i hear it's come up so come up so often it's almost like a sacramental like religious thing like yes bigger yo no it doesn't matter right and that's been ongoing for a few years now what do you mean by a few years though bitcoin's only so old okay i've seen this problem arising for a long time because of uh the technology rate for mining and stuff like the and I think somebody brought up, I can't remember, but it was like, uh, it wasn't in, taken into consideration like the voting and all that because pe- they really didn't think each individual computer or graphics card or whatever would be its own voter, something like that. So like, that's another thing that may be taken into consideration. Yeah. I don't know if I'm off topic there. But I think that was uh, something that they were talking about with the next hard fork. Well, I don't think there's going to be a hard fork and there shouldn't be. No? No. The Bitcoin, yeah, Bitcoin, the transaction fees are slightly higher, but the network is still functioning and is being used more than ever. I'm so happy you brought up the transaction fee because, like, the first thing I realized when I got into Bitcoin is somebody was like, there's zero fees. And I was like, all right. And then I moved some and there was a fee. And I was like, well, what the fuck? Right. <laughs> like, <laughs> That's fair. I was like, I mean, yo, somebody said Bitcoin didn't have any fees. And then the first thing, yeah, I was that. like, what happened? Like, there's a fee. So I kind of, like, 
And that's another thing. Like, I don't, some people don't relay all the information, or they do, but they don't relay it all the way. And that can miss, you know, people get turned off to things like that. Well, it's like if the fee's six cents or 10 cents, like, if you're explaining Bitcoin to someone for the first time, you don't always mention it right. that and, way. And that's what I, I try to turn it a little bit so people see it like, well, imagine if, if Bitcoin wasn't a government or if it was a government and that fee was tax. You know what I mean? Like, so like when you spend Bitcoin dollars, government, that's when you're really getting into some interesting. Uh, yeah, topics. I know. People are like, wait, what? And I'm just like, well, that's what money. You know what I mean? So that's the only way people really can relay it to money. I was like, well, the U.S. dollar is money because the U.S. government said so. And that's where. So imagine if Bitcoin was a government and the you know Bitcoin currency, and they can kind of pick up on that. So it's like you know, imagine uh, if you know the, our government's doing something amazing. Our currency may be worth more around the world. So, and if Bitcoin's doing something awesome, its currency is worth more around the world. Right. So it's like you know, it's just try to help people kind of pick up like, what could I relate this to the closest as possible? Like. Have you ever gotten anybody into Bitcoin? Oh, yeah. Man. Like, who, a, a friend? Oh, a lot? All right. How the hell do you do it? Because, like, I try talking to people. I just feel like they know me too well. Mm -hmm. Like, it's friends or family, and they're like, no, nah, I know Ken. He's a silly little fuck. Like, fuck that dude. Like, he was the class okay. clown. I got good grades in school. Like, you know, I, I made, like, you know, principal's list or dean's list in, like, high school and stuff. I did pretty right. good. Uh, but, like... The, the people I'm trying to get into Bitcoin, I don't feel like they're just listening to me because they know me too well. So how the hell do right. you go about it? Well, it's not something that you can, like, force on someone, right? Like, right, because you're like, I don't need Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah, they have to learn for themselves in the end. So, like, people have heard about Bitcoin, like, three years, three or four years ago. A yeah. lot of people. Yeah, it was, it was everyone, fringe. But... It was bad. It wasn't good talk. It was like, oh, it's drug money. That's, like, when I heard about it, and that's kind of why right. I just tuned it out. You know, like, I just tuned it out. I was like, oh, Bitcoin, I ain't getting in trouble. <laughs> I'm right. not getting in trouble. Well, Bitcoin... So now, like, they hear about it again, and they can uh, approach it differently, well, think yeah, about it as an investment. Yeah, Fox News, it. Forbes talking about it. Everyone's yeah. talking about it now. So it's exciting times. I think 2017 is going to be huge. And one other thing, do you think countries should issue their own digital token? Like, no. A that, would country. that would defeat the purpose, in my opinion. Yeah. If Bitcoin it's if it's like, centralized, it kind of defeats the purpose of a cryptocurrency. Period. So, no, but what like, if it's like a truly uh, like um? There have been plenty of coins issued like on the Omni layer or forks of Bitcoin that have. But I understand stars. where Bitcoin. See, that's where you have right. to they, exactly. All right, so maybe I, I understand what you're saying because I kind of understand how money works, and that's where a whole different. But like, I see what you're saying there, though. Exactly, see what you're saying because it, it can be it can be given value from somewhere from them, and if they. If they put in this amount of effort into this currency, this cryptocurrency, that's why it's worth X. Right. So, but the, the most fun part is it comes down to what is money. This gets back to where we we're starting, right? Like, what is value? How do you, like, well, how does Bitcoin have its value? Well, it does because of the security of the network right. and the reliability of it globally oh, to I work. Killed it. <laughs> killed it? Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> But more largely, like, value is just an agreement between people. That's it's it. Yeah, it's a belief. Yeah, it's a common right. understanding. It's a mutual respect for this this thing. Right, but once you realize that, like, you can have, like, Red Bull coin. And, like, we true, can just, like, actively true. trade stuff to, like... And what that community, ourselves. what that how that community treats it will give it its value, you know? Right. If I want to collect the crap out of my Red Bull coin, it may bring value to it because I'm hoarding it. Exactly. I feel it. I feel it. That's why Bitcoin's so crazy because we can have these conversations that go in nine different directions and all lead to the same fucking rabbit hole. <laughs> well, it, like it's crazy. You it still you end up on your back and you're still looking up and you're like, what the hell have I just been through? Yep. Like so that, so how I wanted to get that answer though. How do you get people into Bitcoin with all this madness? Bitcoin, you just give them like simple analogies. So one that I like is if I texted you the number ten, normally like how would you know that's worth anything? You wouldn't. But if it's 10, like in Bitcoin, you have proof, like cryptographic proof on this transparent network that anyone can do on their computer to that, like it actually happened. And like, this wasn't like a joke. Like, right. This works. 
that's the thing. Like people like laugh about it at first, but now it isn't something you laugh about. Like, it's, Dude, like, when I first started like, looking at it, kind of like, was World Wide Web. Like it actually works for like anything. I know. That's so, like imagine if you could invest in the internet. Like if the internet was a company, <laughs> like the whole th- thing of the internet was a company, and you could invest in that company, and then you could take those shares, and as they gain value, you could trade them for bread and milk at Walmart. Bitcoin, <laughs> like people are just right. like, what? I could have, yeah. I'm like, yeah. And then like, getting into all that, I'm like, hey, you know, you can do this, that, and the other thing. Like, you don't, you know, some people don't even know they can buy stocks with an app, let alone invest in Bitcoin with an app. You know, right. it's it's a scary thing for people because they don't always have money and stuff for that. But once you show them like different ways they can go about getting Bitcoin, like, do how do you get your Bitcoin? Do you earn it? Do you buy it? You know, how do you work for it? Like, what do you, how do you go about getting your Bitcoin? If you don't mind me asking. Yeah, it's just a combination of like working for it and buying it. Oh, awesome. Yeah. yeah. See, yeah, I, I, I try to get myself paid in Bitcoin through my work, cool. but uh it turned out Tips, it would, though, for your videos. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate that. Sure. Yeah, <laughs> that would be awesome. Uh, <laughs> definitely support the next giveaway. Not talking about that yet, but there's one coming. But, um, yeah. So what time are we going to hit 1,000 tonight, man? Oh, let's see if I can. We're going to hit by, like, 4 a.m. Let me see if I can refresh right, that. No, it's been refreshing. Three minutes ago. Three minutes? Oh, okay, good. Well, happy new year to all Bitcoiners, right? Yeah, man. Hey, before we go, I wanted to ask you a uh, question. Um, yeah. I wanted to see what you would, if you could explain in a sentence or two, what, how is Bitcoin better than fiat? Absolutely. So what you're seeing right now in like Venezuela is just one example of what can happen. In like well, what's economy. happening in Venezuela? Some people, have, they're clueless. Fox, no one's talking about it. So what's happening there? There's a currency crisis, so they're having to carry around like 30 grand in cash to like go buy their groceries. Oh my god, I can't imagine that. And that was like people, like when I tell people about that's a possibility here, they're like, no, and I'm like, the 1930s, 50s, something like that. I was like, there was a depression. Well, the Great Depression was 1929. 29, yeah, 30, something, right? I was like around there. And like, it's just... People are like, oh, that won't happen. There's, these are possibilities. Like, this is a black swan events are possible you can price that into the economy and it's not necessarily just here in america though but in other parts of the world where their currencies aren't as reliable and this is an outlet for them to make money to express themselves and access new resources it completely changes everything for them whereas for us we take a lot of these services for granted and i think as more people understand Bitcoin and use it and recognize it, then that will become more and more apparent. We're already seeing that. Yeah, so how do you, how do you use Bitcoin as money, investment, technology? Like, how would you use Bitcoin? I just use it as investment, investment? and to buy food. So, all right. <laughs> buy food, all right. So, yeah, exactly. Same here. Same here. Like smooth. Like, um, dude, I'm blanking on the name, but there's a place in Chicago, like right near Wrigley Field. Amazing empanadas and smoothies. They accept Bitcoin? Yeah. Like straight up Bitcoin? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's fucking awesome. Yep. I'm going to have to check them out. I don't travel much, but if I ever do. In Philadelphia and Jersey. Yeah, I'm working. I got three businesses in the area to accept Bitcoin so far as Bitcoin, and I'm working no on others. Yeah, so hopefully. Yeah, yeah, hopefully I can get BitPay to get me that um, ambassador to things so I can run around <laughs> and be like, yeah. I'm official. I'm not just like a random. Well, you make yourself <laughs> jo- official. I dude. feel like a big a Bitcoin uh, witness when I start walking into businesses and I'm like, "You want to talk about your financial lord and savior, Bitcoin?" <laughs> People are like, "No, no, Visa works." I'm like, "But Visa's robbing you." Yeah. But anyway, man, thanks for uh, stopping by. No problem, bro. I appreciate it, dude. This is awesome. Definitely gonna have to do this again. It's an open door, literally. So just stop cool. by anytime. Thanks for having me. All right, guys. This is awesome. Thanks for uh, joining us for my first interview, guys. Uh, Have a day. (laughs) Peace.